In this video, I'm going to show you how I made my miter saw station, which includes a lot of cool features, like my drill press, a place for my trash, some storage, 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 and oh yeah, a place for my miter saw, dust hood, and a cool stop block system. This is a big project, and there's a lot to do, so let's get started. This project's gonna start on the table saw. I've got a photo of my plans on the tablet so I know all the dimensions I need to cut. And this whole thing is cut out of three quarter inch plywood and I got a stack of it over here. So let's get cutting. Well, these first three pieces are gonna be the doors that go on the front of the miter saw station. And they're just rectangles, and essentially every single part in this miter saw station is just a rectangle cut out of plywood. So that's three down, and I think there's 30 some more to go. I got all 30 some pieces cut off the table saw. So essentially at this point, I've got all the components to put together the miter saw station and I could go ahead and start assembling them. However, I'm gonna go the extra fancy route and I'm gonna cover up all of the exposed edges with solid wood and that's gonna give it a nice appearance and it's also gonna help protect the edges of that plywood a little bit. So I've got a piece of solid birch here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut a whole bunch of quarter inch strips off of there and glue them on most of these edges. Here's how I'm going about putting on the edge banding. I've got my three quarter inch sheet here, which conveniently fits right in the slot on the table saw. And first thing I'm gonna do is just quick deburr the edges. And then a bead of glue, but not too much so we don't have a big squeeze out mess just enough to hold on the edge banding. Take one of my strips and place it on here. Spread the glue out a little bit. Couple of edge clamps just to hold it in place till I can get some nails in it. And then I got one inch 18 gauge brad nails in this gun and I'm just going to shoot uh, several of them to hold this in place. Take the clamps off which by the way spring clamp, bicycle inner tube, edge clamp. That's it, on to the next.
All the pieces that needed edge banding now have those glued and nailed on. And I also sanded everything to 120 grit. These pieces also happen to be all the ones that I wanna put polyurethane on. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that next before assembling, cause it's a lot easier to paint these now than when it's all put together. Well, it took the rest of the day, but all the side panels, all of the three doors and a couple of the other pieces now have two coats of water-based polyurethane on them and they look pretty good. I also added some wooden feet to all of the side panels and that's gonna help elevate them up off the floor a little bit. And I can also use them to shim and level the whole carcass. Now we can start assembling. I've got these put together just enough so that they'll stand up. And now what I wanna do is go and level all of the feet. So I'm gonna start on this end because I know this is the high spot on the floor. And using the level and I cut a bunch of these plywood wedges. I'm just gonna go along and shim up each of these until they're all level with each other. Well, I got everything shimmed. So it's nice and level front to back and along the length of it. However, I definitely underestimated how uneven the floor is because with no shims under that foot there, I need more than an inch worth of shims in this back right corner. So it's not going to work to just shave off the high spots and reduce the feet thickness because I could remove that foot completely and still need shims in the back here. So. Instead, what I'm gonna do is just measure each one of these stacks of shims and cut a piece of wood just for that spot and glue it under there so it'll be a permanent shim that way. I like using these deck screws because they're coated and they blend in really nicely with the wood. A little more expensive, but they're really nice to work with. Oh, okay, don't drop it. Oh, don't drop it. One of the things I wanna to do to help save space with this binder saw station is to put my drill press in it and that gets it off of that workbench over there and puts it over here. Now that I have it over here, it's a little too high. I liked the height that it was on that table over there. The thought for putting it up this high though was so that the table could still drop down um, pretty much as far as it used to go. However, thinking about it, I don't think I've really ever lowered the table more than maybe halfway. I've just never had to drill anything that, that's that tall. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and lower this table to the same height that it was over there. 
The good thing is I, instead of making this tabletop portion of the Microsoft Station one piece of plywood, I've broke it into two pieces. And the thought there was that if I ever need to remove the drill press, if I don't like it here, or if I need to drop the table more, then I can just unscrew this portion of the table and remove it and then be able to use the whole drill press. My new miter saw hood has been working great, but I want to make one upgrade to it. Up to now, I've been using a shop vac and I've been hooking it up with a two inch ABS pipe. But I recently got a full size dust collector that runs on four inch pipe. So I wanna make the holes down here bigger from two inch to four inch so I can use this piping to plumb it into the dust collector. Now to cut that out to a bigger hole, most people would use a jigsaw, but little known trick, all you really need is the right size hole saw and a good whack. This four inch pipe will provide suction to the downdraft portion of the dust hood, but to connect the hose off the back of the miter saw, I 3D printed this adapter, which has a four and a half inch diameter here so that this will mate up to the outside of that, that pipe. And then this side has the same connector as a shot back hose. So I'll be able to connect that right to that shot back hose. So let's go ahead and cut a hole in here and attach this adapter. In order to keep the dust collector from being starved, the surface area of all of these holes plus the surface area of that hole needs to equal the surface area of the four inch pipe. And I just did the math real quick and I need to add 45 more holes to this downdraft table in order for it to be equal. Before I finish the work surfaces here, I'm going to go ahead and install the upper cabinets and I'm lucky enough to have some pre-made ones that I salvaged from a remodel that we did in our office. And so these three cabinets are going to go on either side of the miter saw and then I've got one for the top. And I already pre-made a couple of blocks that they will set on so that they'll be up off of the work surface a little bit. So I'll go ahead and throw those up. I cut the corner out of this cabinet because of the dust collection pipe so that it can run through. And then I just screwed on three blocks of wood here so that I can temporarily put this in place. Yeah. 
And those blocks will hold it there and I can screw it in from the sides. And then I'll take the blocks off. With the upper cabinets installed now, I'm going to go ahead and finish the work surfaces up here. I want something a little more hard wearing than just the plywood. And I've had good luck in the past using this eighth inch hardboard material. And a couple of reasons I like that is because of its, obviously it's nice and hard um, and it wears really well, but it can also be flipped over when one side wears out and then replaced completely pretty easily and it's pretty cheap. So I've gone ahead already and made up a couple of sub assemblies and these are just going to get screwed right to the top here. And that'll make up the work surfaces. And let me show you a couple of details about these. The construction of these two pieces is pretty simple. It's just half inch plywood underneath and then the same solid edge banding that I've been using everywhere else on the sides, but I left it a little tall so that when I put the eighth inch hardboard on, I used a flush trim bit in the router to make the solid edging the same plane as the hardboard. And that helps to capture the hardboard so it can't move around, but it makes it pretty easy to just pop it out, flip it around, or to replace it altogether down the road. And the reason I have two pieces here instead of one solid one is this gap in here is essentially a dado that I'm going to use to uh, have a stop block ride back and forth in. So the stop block will grip onto this piece and slide back and forth. And then on the back piece here you can see the solid edge banding is quite a bit wider and that's there because I made a small recess cut here and that's going to be for an adhesive backed tape measure to stick on there. So when you're using the stop block you can just use the tape measure right on the work surface. Looks good. Time for drawers and doors down below. To mount the three doors down below, I'm just gonna be using these basic hinges and they install into a hole like this. And then there's two screws that go in to attach the hinge. So I get to use the drill press in its new location to drill a bunch of these holes.
When I was drilling the holes for the hinges, I also put a big hole right here, and this is gonna act as my uh, handle pull, essentially. So instead of having a handle that sticks proud of the surface, which I would inevitably run into in this small area, I wanted something that was nice and flush, so I'm just gonna go with a hole. But to dress it up a little bit, I 3D printed this little uh, decorative cover, and it installs through through the hole and it's threaded. So the two pieces thread from either side and finish off the handle pull quite nicely. I added a small scrap of plywood here to act as a stop. And now the door is shut nicely. These large cabinets down below with doors are gonna be great for storing stuff on wheels like this cyclone that I made. For the drawers, I've already got these ones made. I didn't record any of this because it's really just more of the same cutting rectangles and gluing them together. It's pretty basic construction. There's just a hoop of plywood that I screwed and glued together. And then the bottom is just glued right to that hoop. There's no fancy joinery. It's all butt joints and glue. And I reinforced all of the edges with screws to help with the, the load transfer so they'll hold up a little bit better. And I already went ahead and pre-finished the insides with two coats of water-based polyurethane. So they're ready to go in the station. I went ahead and finished the drawer fronts off camera by adding more solid edge banding and then putting on two coats of water-based polyurethane, just like all the other parts on the Midasaw station. And so now I'm ready to do the final assembly here. And for the drawer pulls, I designed a pull similar to the ones I used on the cabinets and 3D printed it. But instead of it being a hole just all the way through the door, these ones are a little bit different where the back is fully enclosed and the front has a little lip on it so that you can pull with a couple fingers, but they still just simply screw together and install in a hole that I cut with this hole saw. And with the back being recessed, the back of the drawer pull sits nice and flush so that the drawer front will go onto the drawers easily. Since these just install in a hole, there's nothing to keep them from rotating. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of silicone sealant and that'll provide enough grip to keep these from spinning over time.
It's done. It's finally done. Time to cut some wood and test it out. Oh, one last cool thing. I made this miter saw stop block and it rides back and forth in the track on the tabletop surface here. And it just clamps in place with a star knob. And then there's also an extension piece that can go towards the saw even a little closer. And that'll help me cut small parts. I made a separate video just on this because I thought it was uh, kind of interesting. So I'll leave a link to the video in the description so you can check that out. Now let's cut something. I just need to temporarily hook up the dust collection. I don't have my piping run yet, so I'll just have to do this for now. Well, I'm really happy to have this miter saw station done. Not only does it add a lot of functionality to the miter saw itself, but this is now basically my one-stop shop for all of my tools and my supplies. Almost everything's gonna fit in this miter saw station, which is gonna make having a home for all those tools really nice. If you wanna know more info about the dust hood itself or any of the other things that I've worked on in this video, I'll have links down in the description, so check those things out. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you in the next project.